Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm going to be looking at our, our showing you how I make tassels. And tassels for one of my specialties, if you will, is beaded chain um, uh, necklaces, long boho beaded chain necklaces. And I like to put tassels on them using sorry silk rhythm. Um, so I wanted to show you how I make. I've had a lot of people ask me. I told some people how to do it online through our Facebook page with Jesse James Beads, but um, I, I've had requests for me to show you how to do it. I may or may not do it the same way as somebody else who does it. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm okay with that. As a musician, as a creative person, to me, it's nice to know that, um, and it's okay to know that there are more than one way to do things. And I have, I have kind of evolved over the years as of making these, um, to get it to the way I, I like it, but the way I like it may not be the way you like it. So you can take this information and then make it your own, do what you want to do with it, be creative. Um, and I'll show you a few things of the things I've done, um, during the, the, the course of the video but yes so today we're going to be making tassels and talking about what to what how to make it um there are different ways so we'll get to that when we get to the beading side see you there okay hi everyone now that we're on the beading mat side i wanted to show you some of the things i'm going to be using to make the <clears throat> tasseled Sorry, silk tassel, tassels that I love to use in my necklaces. Um, I'm going to start off with sorry silk, and this is a big batch of it. It comes in a in a skein. Um, I don't think that's how you say it. Um, various widths of the person I purchase it from. I I personally like to use uh, local artisans if. Uh, or suppliers, if possible. I lived in California for <clears throat> for most of my life, and so I did find somebody in California who had sorry silk that I really loved her shop, and um, she's on Etsy. And I will drop the information down on in the on my YouTube down below. Um, but anyways, she's somebody I use all the time. You don't have to use this person and you don't have to use raw, the raw, sorry, silk like I like to use. This is all fuzzy and everything and unfinished. And I personally like it that way, but not everybody does. But um, anyways, I'll get back to the sorry silk in a minute. We're also going to be using embroidery thread. Now I have white thread out so that you can see the contrast onto the this, but normally I would use the same color thread or close to the same color as I have um, sorry silk so that it blends in and you can it'll be hidden in case the bead cap doesn't cover it then I will also use um, beads and a bead cap this is the bead cap I was talking about and and some beads that I'm using from Jesse James Bead um, Mix. Tis the Season number two, which I think came out mm, two years ago, maybe longer. I can't remember. Um, but um, I've moved and in my new studio, and so I can find things now. I'm so excited. It's like Christmas. I'm also going to be using uh, Beadalon. This, in this case, is Beadalon. You can use any wrapping wire that you want. I am using. 20 gauge um they have it comes in many sizes this is 24 just so you can see um i use the round and the medium temper it makes it easier to manipulate it so the so wrapping wire that's 20 gauge uh anything heavier is harder to manipulate um anything lighter doesn't hold up well um especially when you add beads to the tassel and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Um, then let's see. So we have the sorry silk, wrapping wire, this, the, the beads. And then the tools I'll be using, I like to use, you can either use your curved nosed pliers here or your um, pointy um, nose pliers here. 
pointy nose. It has another name. It'll come to me. I use round. This is the one I use the most, the round nose pliers. I will also sometimes use um, the squared nose pliers. Um, some snippers. And I used this nylon nosed pliers to help straighten out my wire if I need it. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I wanted to demonstrate this to you, was, um, again, depending on what you get, I mean, you can even use ribbons to make tassels. You can use any type of material you want. Um, I like my tassels full. I like them almost fuller than a lot of people just almost like like poofy <laughs> and um and I know some people don't so I personally what I always start off with is I start off with 10 I'll make 10 cuts 10 strands of the sari silk and um if it's super thin I might go 12 um, or 14, depending on how thin the silk is. If it's thicker than this, which I have had some, or the material's um, firmer, then I might go only eight. It it all depends. Now, one thing I want to point out with Sari Silk is they 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 sew pieces together and then they they cut them into the strips. And as you can see here, oh look, it's coming apart. There was a sewn on part. Well, that. I try to avoid using uh, a piece that has the the stitching there only because of what just happened. Um, I have had it where like one of them, the stitching part fell off and it was maybe about three inches and I try to shove it in the middle and hide it and it was one I kept <laughs> for myself. But yeah, you want to try to avoid that. And so, um, so what I'm going to do is get my scissors. I buried them. Oh dear. Here we go. Get my scissors and I'm just going to trim off. I mean, I'm not trying to be super neat. Just trim off the, the super rough edge. And then I make this length 15 inches. I'm going to cut off 15 inches. And now you might say, oh, I don't want a 15 inch um, tassel, but you're not going to get a 15 inch tassel. You are going to get, I mean, half, you're going to split, you're going to fold it in half, right? So that'll be what, seven and a half inches, but um, you also need to trim it. So it, it's the you know rule of thumb is it's always easier to take off than it is to add. And in this case, it's almost impossible to add. So I'm going to 15 inches. There we go. And then I just use the, the one I cut to cut off the rest. Now I've already cut eight. <laughs> so um, at least I think they're eight. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, yeah. So this is nine, and now I need one more. So I'm just gonna do this. And what I'm gonna look for is to see if I have any part where I have a tie, you know, where um, there's stitching. And I just avoid it, and I'm uh, sorry. There we go, I went off camera. Keep forgetting it's there. Okay, so now I have 10. Um, I'm not going to iron them. I'm not going to do anything. There's a lot of extra hair here that I'm just going to trim off. Hairy piece. And I will do that after I'm done. I probably won't demonstrate that, but I, will. I do cut off excess. Um, some of the um, pieces I get are really frayed. But some aren't. So it just, you know, it depends. You can, the pictures of the shop I get it from, does a real good job uh, with their pictures really kind of just showing what, what what's there. So now I'm just going to grab all, all the ends on one side. I'll try to make these even and then the other side will be a little less even because I'm kind of just, ran, you know, cut quickly. I'm not worried about it being precise. Um, the shop that I get this from is, is called um, Felt Better on Nancy. And um, I'm, I don't usually like, you know, like I said, there are a lot of different shops you can go to to get Sari Silk. Um, but I like her shop. I could buy 10 yards or 40 to 45 yards. And when I get the 40 to 45 yard, um, I use the Sari Silk for bracelets, uh, weaving, um, 
doing braided bracelets, um, making artisan beads with the smaller pieces that I like this one that, you know, fall off or cut off. So I, I use it a lot. And, um, and I figure that it's like by the time I use it, it's maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.06 cents per inch. And that's, that's, that's good money as far as I'm you know concerned. So I, I, I'm okay with, um, <clears throat> saving myself some, uh, you know, using a little more than I might need to. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get myself two strands of embroidery thread. Embroidery thread is a little thicker than um, regular thread, but you could use regular thread. I'll just double up the regular thread. I can't talk. And then I'm going to attach this to the middle, roughly. So I'm just going to tie it. First, just do once, not a not yet. There we go. And all I have to say is the minute I go on the camera, I'm really all thumbs. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is see how off I am, and I'm pretty off. So then I just loosen it a little and, and move it down. There we go. You think I'm really good at guessing, but I... I lay it out flat and do it. My Lord, see, I told you I'm all thumbs. Okay, there. So that's close enough. So what I do is I'm going to trim the bottom. But for right now, I'm just going to do a quick guesstimate. And then keeping this as tight as I can, I'm going to grab it and tie it one more time. But I need to keep this tight. Because the whole purpose, um, it's loosened up, so I'm going to pull it tight with my bottom fingers and then bring it here. And it's a little looser than I want. There we go. So that's my first step. I just tied it. Um, other people who make tassels, everybody kind of does it their own way. Some might do it my way. I don't know. I just saw a tassel and... Um, I saw somebody making a tassel and um, I, they just used wire and I thought, oh, that's really cool. And I tried the wire and it just didn't work for me. So I then started making tassels when I taught at Michael's classes. There was one um, project that used tassels and I'm like, yeah, I definitely like tying off. I like it this way. It makes it a tight, tighter at the top. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about six inches and I'm using six inches. If I, if I wasn't going to add beads here, like the beads to the wire uh, or to the top of the tassel, if I wasn't going to use beads, then I might go four or five inches. But because, because I'm adding beads, I'm going to go about six inches on my wire. So let me get something to measure off my six inches as I throw all of them around. Here we go. So here we are. So I'm going to measure about six inches. Sorry, let me straighten this out. Measure about six inches. Eh, I probably could go five, but I'll, I'll go with six. I'm going to play it safe. And I'm going to cut. Set this aside for when I make necklaces. I just put everything, try to put everything away after I use them, which I haven't done with my tools, so I'm fumbling over them. All right, so now this is the, this was like one step for me. Step two is adding the wire to the loop. Now, what, what I like to do is keep the thread um, at the bottom. So when I... So I'm going to close it up like this, and the thread's going to be underneath, and I'll show you why. It just is, it looks neater, it, and it makes it a little easier to, to tie it off. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to put it around, and I'm just going to pop it up. Bring it up here, and I'm going to try to make sure I'm in the camera. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I've already made one, and I did it on camera, and almost all of it was off, uh, my hands <laughs> went off camera, so that's why I'm making another one. Okay, so 
Um, what I'm going to do is pull it really tight, as tight as I can with the wire. Now, one of the reasons I didn't like um, using just wire and not thread was because if you don't get it tight enough, these can start coming off, you know, out. Now I'm going to, I want to try to get this so it's on top here. And now I'm going to just wrap this bottom one around. I usually like the tail a little bigger because it's easier. We're talking about hand health. It's, it's better for your hands to have a little more wires to manipulate. But, but because I'm only going to do a couple wraps, one, and then this one. And I, it doesn't even matter how it looks. I want to keep it down low though, so that when I put the bead cap on, it, it's as close to this as possible. It makes it for a tighter, neater look. I'm going to trim that off. I'm still going to tuck in the sharp end just because. There we go. All right. So now I have, and I'm going to straighten the wire out there. So now I have the wire on. And I am now going to bring the two white threads out. And again, this is why I did it in, did not use matching colors for these threads. Sometimes it's hard to find them. <laughs> if they're the same color. I have had that. And then I'm going to bring this down. This is where I started going off camera. <laughs> On the other one. I'm bringing this down and I want to make sure that the other white one is down also. Then you see how this is tucked into the um, fabric? If you, if you have this on top here, it's harder to start this process, which is wrapping it around the tip. So now I'm going to wrap it around the tip and if I go off screen, Forgive me. I'm going to do about five times, maybe six. I can stop counting. All right. So now with the first one, I was going, I was going in this direction. So I was going clockwise. For the second one, I'm going to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to bring it up. Well, there. Bring it up and then I'm holding this other string as tight as I can with my other hand here and I'm going to wrap this one again, apologies for going off, around three, four. Now if you notice, this is really tight. I mean, high up. I, I go down usually a little lower, but you can do it. I mean, this is good because I I personally prefer it up as high as I can be. Um, again, you'll see in a minute. Uh, there. I do have times, you guys, where I the whole thing comes undone and, um, and then I cry and, and then start over again. <laughs> Or I say, fudge sticks. And I think, oh, there. Okay. I thought the whole thing had come undone, but it was the loose thread. All right, there. So I have one knot. I'm just going to pull it tight and then tie the next one. I don't even need to. There we go. I don't need a glue. And then the next step is just to get my scissors. Snip this down pretty close. There we go. Oops, that's all the way. And there we have it. It's it's not pretty, but guess what? It's not showing either. All right. Uh, you, normally I'm down like about here, but this one worked. <laughs> Amazingly. All right. So now the reason I'm not worried is because of this. Now I'm going to get the bead cap and using my square nose pliers I'm going to go inside and just going to put it in and then pull these out and it just helps to open this up a little and and usually you can use your fingers too 
there's an over overlap. So I try to like make a effort to remember where that overlap was. So I just widen it out. Now, um, I do get some bead caps from an artisan on Etsy who does hand painting and these get sticky because they've been painted. So using the, the, the pliers to help open it up, it really does help. All right. So now I'm going to put the wire into the hole of the bead cap poke myself in the hand with the wire <laughs> and then gently close this up. And I want you to see, I hope it's not blurry picture. There. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the nylon nose and I'm, so I'm holding this and I'm pulling the bead cap down so that it's down as far as it can be. Now, sometimes one of the reasons you want to use the same color is because sometimes the, um, if, if you wrap it down lower, it, you get peeks through the, um, the openings, but I did a good job keeping it up so I can don't have to redo this with why I can keep the white. You can see, you can't see it. And then you can see just the top of the, um, wrap that I did. And again, I only did a couple wraps and I, and I almost kept them like, um, sideways. I mean, you know, wrapped it around itself, um, so that it doesn't go too high. You don't want to wrap too high because this won't be able to go all the way through, go all the way down then. And then the, the, um, higher the bead cap is, the greater the chance you're going to see your thread. And this way, it holds the thread in place and protects the thread. And um, it just gives it that added extra. The thread, tightening it up there, it gives it a little less bulk up here, up at the top. Now, some people would skip that um, step, the last step I did with the thread, tying it off, and they just put the bead cap on. And you think, oh, it'll hold it. I tried that, and it um, it didn't look as nice. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not happy with this. Hang on. Right. It got um, a little oval -y. There we go. I'll fix that later. All right. So now I'm going to add the beads. And this is why we have this extra length. So um, I'm going to, this is from, like I said, the Tis the Season bead mix, Jesse James bead mix. Sorry, keep doing a little housekeeping there. I love bead caps. I bead caps are great at giving you texture, at hiding things on beads. But um there no, this, this is a little clip in this bead, so I'm gonna get another one because after I use this, I'm gonna turn it into a necklace for my shop. I never waste not want none. I'm using this peppy. All right, so here, but I, I'm really picky, sorry. That one just had a wee bit of a tip. I will use it for something, trust me. There we go. And then I just gonna, I do this combination, you know, do a little combination. I'm doing the two different reds because it's a nice contrast. This is brass and and um I don't have brass wrapping wire. <laughs> Um, I don't know if anybody does make it and that's okay. Gold because my bead cap's gold. Um, and there, so there I go. I have my three beads on the top of it. It just gives it a little, um, character. You can go down to one bead if you want. Um, and that's okay too. I just do this, um, just to help. I mean, I don't know. I just like, I like adding a little bling to my tassel. All right. I'm going to get these out of the way real quick. And then I'm going to do, make my loop. Now, <clears throat> as many of you know, or maybe you don't know if you're beginning, there's different ways to do, to, you know, you get the end product. There are different ways to get to the end product, if you will, or the end, the desired look. I taught myself how to make jewelry. I do not, there's others online who are great at using the pliers, bending it, and then you come back and make your loop. I, I don't do that. I give myself a, maybe about 
an eighth to a quarter of an inch. I'm going to go all the way down to the fat end because I want my loop to be bigger because no matter what you do or what you're going to use this for, if you're going to use it for a beaded chain like what I make, and I'll show you an example um, after I'm done, um, or if you're just going to uh, put this tassel and beads on... Um, on a plain chain or on leather or on, a, you know, silk, um, not what silk, you know, the, the rat's tail, is that what it's called? <laughs> Anyways, whatever you're going to hang this on, you want your loop probably to be a little bigger. There's a reason for it. So, so I go down to the very big part of my um, round nose pliers and then I just bring this around and I stop so I've made myself kind of like a P and then I'm gonna wrap it around once then twice and then I'm gonna straighten it out my loop out like that now I, I, I Give, gave it a little more room here than I wanted to, but that's okay because I have a lot of excess here. I'm going to go down and around. And then I like to, after I go down and around, there, I like to go back up and overlap the top part. And hopefully I'll have enough to get pretty much to the top, close to the top there. Um, the reason, there's two reasons. One, I like a, it, this is, I make chunky necklaces. And again, I'll demonstrate. I'll show you, I mean, I'll show you an example in a minute. Um, so I like a little, things a little thicker, but also it helps to support this whole, this, this area here. Um, because it, you are going to be putting this, loop through a string so this will be dangling off and this just gives it a little support so it doesn't bend as easily sorry about that here we go okay there we go now we have our beads on our tassel it looks beautiful now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the hair and as you can see what I do is I find my shortest ones and then I usually trim it to that point point. and yes you might say oh that's an awful lot you're getting rid of but you know what it's okay it's easier to cut than it is to add <laughs> just always remember that and um I personally always end up making my tassels with beads about seven inches, seven to eight inches long. Uh, you could go shorter. I I just um, prefer that. Um, sometimes I will cut later on after that because it looks better um, when I look at it on. So here, this one's 10 inches. So I'm probably going to go, maybe this one will probably be closer to the eight inch mark. Maybe even a little longer, but I'm I am gonna cut it to the end of that one. Um, I just find that I end up everything ends up being about uh, seven inches long at the max eight, and I literally just cut it across. And then. I loosen it and I tighten it again so that I see if there's any awkward pieces sticking out badly. Not too many. Here. Just, not that anybody's going to notice, but oh, uh -huh, I notice. And then I just, you know, trim it like that. I'll look at it again later. So now there's my finished piece. So as I said, I've already made one of these. Just, I'll, fix, I'll fix that later. I'm, I'm on it. Um, I've already made one of these uh, in another video that I ended up, I won't be using any part of. I used different, a different bead though from it. So this one turned out this way and it was a little shorter because uh, the beads are a little flatter, Rondell. And that, that one turned out really cute too. All right, now let me show you, I'm gonna get rid of my trash so I can show you some other examples of what you can do. So not only do I have these two, and I'm trying to think too if there's anything I forgot to mention in all of this. 
It really is easy. And to be honest with you, the part where I'm tying it around to make the bent you know, portion and tying it around, that is probably the hardest part of this whole thing. So, so if, you know, if that's the case, then yay. All right. So here is another one. So what I do is I make a lot of these necklaces. I have someone who buys them um, to sell in the shop. And so um, let's, so like, for instance, this one, thread threads all over this one I um I made but I never make anything until I know what beads I'm going to use with it because that actually would determine all the colors that I I'm using and then what I do is I I put all of my stuff that I'm going to be using in a bag the different beads are in here that I'm going to be using and that helps to guide what colors I'm going to use and and then um I put the put the finished product uh tassel in the bag with the beads and that way i have like kind of that way i can assembly line it <laughs> later on all right and then there are other options you could do so here for instance here's one with a large pendant um this one if it if it was doing anything other than hanging i would be a little dubious of it because um this pendant makes this makes it heavy so the wire 20 gauge wire is a little kind of wimpy under it but because it's going to be dangling that's okay i also want to point out that if you are going to hang this on a um chain or piece of leather cording then you could turn your your loop so that like turn it this way and this happens to be loose so that would work out but if it's not loose let's say and it like this one would work out probably no matter what what direction you went in but um if you had something like big like this uh, you can always turn your loop I need to do. All right. And then um, here's another one. Uh, this is one of my other assembly line ones. <laughs> um, just demonstrating the different type of beads you can use, the fancy little things. And then I have some pieces here that I wanted to show you. This is what I make. I have another purple one similar to this in my shop that I... Um, just recently made with a Jesse James beads, purple lavender fields. I think it was called. I loved it so much that I bought more so that I could make myself one. Uh, the Tensha beads were just wonderful. So as you can see, I added beads and then this is what I'm talking about. I add my, I make my own beaded, um, beaded a chain gosh i'm so sorry you guys so the beaded chain and each segment that's the word i was looking for each segment is individually wrapped onto it now i this is why it's good to make this hole here a little bigger because that way you have room so that these can move freely um but anyways so that this was the a beaded chain necklace which is what i mostly make Here's, I wanted to show you a couple more. This one, I did not, this is one of my first ones, and I did not add a bead to the top of this. If I did this over again, I would. <laughs> Just, that's me now. But what I did was I attached, I did its own little segment, a pendant, and it turned out pretty nice on this one. This is one of my favorite ones. And then... The very first one I made, uh, let me just show you this real quick. This was one I want to see, show you what it looks like in copper. And again, all of, almost all of this stuff has Jesse James beads. There's a few other. This is one of the first ones I ever made. And this is one where uh, a contest they had. And I was the very first tassel um, necklace I made and I won the contest and boy these pink ones look dirty almost <laughs> it's, it's like I wear it all the time I used to wear it all the time but um I I this is my first attempt at wire working too so I just added the wire around this wonderful turtle wood turtle 
Isn't that beautiful? I have a couple more I need to use. And I made the tasso attached the tasso to it. Now you look at this. This one, the 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 um sorry, silk is thinner. So I, I didn't use more. So it's a it's a little thinner than what I do now, but it's still very effective. I also back in the day, and this is pretty like gnarly too, I used um lobster claws but i don't anymore i finish it off so that i can um uh because it goes over your head i also in the beginning when i first started doing it used jump rings in between but i found that they tended to break um this might this one didn't so much but i um i i just started going and making more of a rosary chain type of beaded necklace so those are all this sample oh i did want to show one more so that you can experiment. This is one that I'm going to be putting. It's on, in my shop. Again, I made it with Jesse James beads this time. Sorry. Yay. Hopefully nobody got seasick. This time, I didn't make a beaded chain, but I still made the tassel. And because I was using Jesse James fairy silk, and I didn't have a lot of it, so I was creative and added some chain to it. And I'm going to give you a secret if you will, so you know that what I did to the chain is I, I cut the chain and then I, I looped the chain over the, um, the wire, wrapping wire. And then when I put this on, it's covering up the chain, but that way the chain's really, it's hooked on. I mean, this is covering it. I made the, regular tassel or this fairy silk tassel I made it the same way I did with my other ones using the um tying it with embroidery thread it just it just to me gives it a little more um, just controls it better <laughs> I don't know that's not the word I wanted to say but anyway so this is this is again using the same tassel you can make your own tassel but you can add other things I've seen people add um just bead lengths that are on that are strung you know you could do the sky's the limit once you start getting used to it and hooked on it so good luck with that and like I said let me finish off with the one that we did and um like I said it's it's pretty easy um and they're very effective i i i love them i i keep thinking i'm gonna make just the tassels to sell on my shop but i never do because i just like fall in love with them and i and i and i just it's hard for me to make just the tassel i i i see it i envision it with the whole necklace so one of these days i will i'll get over it i'll try but anyways good luck with this um if you have any questions let me know what i'll do is i'll give you um again i'm i'm not trying to plug just any one person i i get my bead caps from three or four different sources and my sorry silk i do get it from one person only because i went to her, was happy, and I've never really changed since. Um, your wrapping wire, you can use any wrapping wire you want. And um, and then the beads, I just love using the Jesse James beads, especially as my focal pieces. Uh, they're, they're unique and they have character. All right, good luck and have fun making your tassels. <laughs>